Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we're finally getting to work on the 1975 El Camino. Uh, we've got a set of 305 high output cylinder heads that are going to go on it. Today is going to be the teardown because we need to know how far down in the hole the pistons are, and we need to know how many cc's the dish on each piston is, or the dish on the pistons is, so we can order the correct thickness head gasket so we don't get the compression too high, so we can still run on pump gas. Because we're going to go from about factory 8 to 1 compression to somewhere in the neighborhood of 10. Hopefully. Let's get to it. And here it is, our mostly unmolested 1975 354 barrel. There's really nothing wrong with it other than when you start it up, it smokes. And that's because it's got bad valve seals. Now, do you need to replace cylinder heads to do valve seals? Absolutely not. What you can do is pull a spark plug, then get an air compressor and a compression testing hose, put it in there. So you've got a hundred and something odd PSI going into the cylinder, pop the valve cover off, and you can then take the keepers off the top of the valve springs, and you can do things that way. But since this has crappy 8 to 1 compression, and I got another set of cylinder heads for really cheap, it's these ones that I've made several shorts on. 305 high output, 53, 54 cc's, and um, yeah, brand new valve seals on too. And it's hard to tell here, but I did some polishing and shaping on the bowls on all these. So they're closer to 55 cc's, which is fine. That's going to help our cause of keeping it at or a little under 10 to 1. Oh, that weighs a ton. Also, uh, we're not going to do camshaft or anything crazy like that yet, but I do have 1.6 rockers that I put on the intake only because according to the internet, if you've got everything else stock and you get more intake lift, you get more everything. So we're going to test that theory. Worst case scenario, take them back off and put 1.5s on. No big deal. I think best way to do this is probably going to be mostly tie and laps because it's just ripping a whole bunch of crap off the top of this thing. So here we go. Almost got the intake off, but the problem with these small block Chevys of the Smog era are trying to get to this last bolt. It's right here behind the EGR, and the way this intake is built, it is just really, really hard to get a socket on here, especially when there's corrosion, carbon, anything like that. So, I'm fighting that one last 9 16 bolt that's right there. Then we'll get this intake off of here. Ah. Ooh. Okay, so I finally managed to get this last bolt out by the EGR valve. What I actually had to do is I had to take this 916 shallow and I had to grind it down to get the chamfer off the edge of the socket so I could get it to set deeper onto the head of this bolt, which as you can see, it's already starting to be rounded by somebody else trying to take it off before. And I had to be able to get deep enough to get it and turn it, which we did. So there you go, modify your tools sometimes, take your socket, grind the chamfer off the end of it so you've got a good grip all the way to the edge of that socket. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Next thing you gotta do is strip these valve covers off. That way we can get this intake right off of here. There we go. There's one beautiful valve cover. I know what you're thinking, and no, those aren't actually aluminum. dropped a socket right down into the coolant. That happens every time. You may not know that. At some point in the job, you always, always lose a socket or a wrench or something down into your coolant. That's just the way it goes. That's automotive law. Nothing I can do about it. There we go. Now we're ready to pry this intake off here. Everything out of the way. Yes. Well, except the vacuum line. I should probably take that off. There we go. Now everything's out of the way. Uh, how can we break this loose? Yep. 
<laughs> Missed the coolant bucket. And we'll get coolant down in here, but not a big deal because we plan on changing the oil after this big job anyways. It would be foolish not to. I'm not saying I haven't done that before, but it's foolish. Let's just put it that way. Oh. Alrighty then. Okay, the whole thing is now broken loose. And the avalanche of tools continues. Alright, this thing weighs a million pounds, so let's just move the rest of these tools over here. They're all running up on the ground, I might as well put them there now. Now let's try to manhandle this beast off of here. And am I going to change the intake when we change the heads? No. No, I'm not. And I'll tell you why as soon as I can get this thing to come off of here. So like I was saying, why am I not going to change the intake? Well, my plan for this thing is to make it a tow rig, which means I want all of my horsepower and torque down below 4,000. Basically, you know, idle 1,500 up to 4,000. And I watch a lot of YouTube videos, as we all do. Thank you for watching mine. And what I've discovered on shows that do dyno tests and answer questions that people have about intake manifolds is that there's not really an aftermarket intake manifold that beats the stock dual plane cast iron intake for down low torque. Now, are there some that are close? Yes. Would they save weight? Yes. Am I worried about weight in the front end? No. So I'm not going to waste the money. It's a waste of money for me to go and swap the intake out and actually probably most likely lose torque, which is actually what I'm trying to gain. Take four. There we go. Whew. That thing weighs a metric ton, which is why we go with pounds. Okay. Intake's off. Let's look down in the valley of this thing. I've never had it apart. Uh, I believe it's a low mileage engine. Let's take a look for ourselves, shall we? Okay, so like I said, I've never had this intake off and it looks like maybe it's been off once. Look how clean that is down the valley. I think this is actually an 84,000 mile engine, which is fantastic for me because, well, I don't plan on doing a whole lot to it before we use it as a tow rig. All right, that's about as clean a valley pan as you're gonna get from something in the 1970s. Whew. All right, guys, it's hot out. I'm gonna take a break. And then we'll come back and get these cylinder heads. Approximately 10 hours later. Ooh, and we're back. Much, much later. Ran into a bit of a snag. Dirty, built this snag. Let me show you what's happening. I did manage to get the passenger side cylinder head off. That's not a big deal. That's what we wanted. As you can see here, it looks fine. Well, that's the gasket, but it looks fine. Those are the big 882 76cc heads. That's what we're getting rid of. And we're going to put my nice 55cc heads on. The problem I ran into is while this is a California car and the exhaust manifold bolts to the head came off just fine, the bolts that hold the manifold onto the exhaust Y pipe, I cannot get off. So I had to get the cylinder head off with the exhaust manifolds in the way. Which on a small block Chevy, I can tell you, is no small feat, which is why I just did one side today. That side will be later. But right now, I'm going to show you how far down in the hole that piston is, uh, and we will get some idea of the dish size in cc's. That way we know what head gasket to order. All right, let's get started. So the process for measuring how far down the piston is, it's pretty simple. Uh, rotate the engine around until one of the pistons is at its top dead center. It doesn't matter which one. We're not talking firing order here or ignition. We're just looking for this to be at its peak, which it is. Then we're going to put a straight edge across here. And then we're going to put feeler gauges between this surface and the straight edge. And we'll see how far down in the hole the piston is. It's pretty simple. So, there's our straight edge. Like that. Now, I have already pre-guessed this. I checked already. This is a 17 and an 18, which if I do the math, that makes 35. And I've got just a drag. So this thing 
is 35 thousandths down in the hole, which we can use for our calculations. Next, we need to find out how many cc's this piston is. Now, to cc that piston, uh, it's going to be the same thing I do for cc on cylinder heads. I'm going to take my Lexan with a hole in it and a whole bunch of grease, and I'm going to seal up all the holes except for the ones right at the center of that dish in the piston. Uh, and then we'll fill it up with a little bit of liquid, find out how much liquid that is, and that's how we'll know how many cc's the dish on our piston is. That way, once again, we'll be able to order the right thickness head gasket so we keep our compression right around 10.0, 10 10.2 to 1 at most. As far down as 9.5, I don't really care. Uh, but we also don't want to have more than like 40, 50 thousandths quench, which means if I've got a 35 thousandths gap between the top of the piston and the surface of the cylinder head, I really don't want more than like 20 thousandths. And that would put me at 55. Like, I want a thin head gasket. So I want to make sure that I can do that, and that's why this is important. If I have to go a thicker head gasket, then you can get detonation and pinging and... <sighs> yeah. Okay, too much. What I'm doing here, besides making a giant mess, is sort of like packing a bearing. I want to fill in between the edge of that piston and the cylinder wall. I just want to know what that center part is. So this is it's a horrible mess, and this is a bad idea, and I've never done this before, but if it works, then it's a great idea. However, it hasn't worked yet, so I guess we'll find out, huh? A little bit of the center of that, so I can get the most accurate of my inaccurate readings that I possibly can. There we go. Something like that, anyways. Now, in the grand scheme of things, these only came in two flavors, and I believe it's either 18 or 24 cc's. So, only so much what can be done. That seems to have... That seems to have sealed it. See how that looks like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich all the way around the edge? That's sealed. All right, let's get our water. Now what I've got for this is just a plastic cup full of water and an old kid's medicine dropper. Uh, it's three milliliters or three cc's. So every time we fill this up, we're gonna go to three and that's gonna be three cc's. We're gonna go until the water comes out the hole in the top. And once we're past 18, we can actually stop because that means it will be the 24 cc variety. So, let's go three at a time and see what happens. Six. Six has gotten us about a third of the way, so I'm thinking these are going to be 18 cc. Nine. This is going to be 12. I don't know if you can see the water filling that, but it is. 15. And since we've got grease and everything in there, this is going to go to about 16 or 17. Yeah. Does that put us at 16 plus the amount of grease in there? We have an 18cc dish. There we go. That did work. Now we've got all of our numbers, and we can order a head gasket. Oh, all right, you guys. I just got done looking at the Summit Race Calculator online, which you can do. Uh, and I did the compression calculator, which is what we did all that measuring for. Uh, and we have your small block Chevy. So it is a bore of 4.0. It's a stroke of 3.48. The cylinder head CCs on our new head are 54 CCs, give or take. Some are a little over, some are a little under, because I ported and polished them myself. So whatever, 54, good number. We measured the dish with the grease, just like we're measuring cylinder head CC, 18 CC dish. Our deck clearance, which was the feeler gauges between the deck of the block and the piston being in the hole, how far down in the hole it is, 35 thousandths, which means if we run the steel shim head gasket of 0.015, and that keeps us at the top of the 50 thousandths for quench, we're gonna have 9.7 to one compression. 
And that's just fantastic for me. I wanted to keep it under 10, but I wanted to be kind of close to 10. 9.7 to 1, that's pretty close to 10. We'll take it. It's over 9.5, which means we have picked up 1.7 points of compression, which should give us... I have no clue how many horsepower that gives us, and I really don't care. It's going to be better. And keeping it under 10 means we can run regular gas. We don't have to bump the timing back to compensate for any pinging or detonation because we have kept that clearance under 50 thousandths total between deck and gasket. So we should have good quench. Um, and then we've got those 1.6 rockers on the intake, which may or may not, depending on who you listen to on the internet, do anything for us. Uh, and if that does nothing, eventually we can do camshaft, timing chain, whatnot, so forth. But right now, we're gonna be 9.7 to one. That's fantastic news. I'm excited. That means I can go order parts. That means I can take the other cylinder head off, which I don't want to because I can't get the manifolds to get off of there. <sighs> the exhaust manifold's a pain. I'm gonna have to find a way to get that off there easier because that literally took me two hours to get head bolts off because I cannot get the exhaust manifolds to come off of the exhaust pipes. I don't feel like cutting it with a Sawzall, but I may have to just to drop it back far enough. <sighs> it, it's a project car. You guys know how it is, but we're gonna have 9.71 compression. We are doing everything else stock. We are going to have a great towing rig. All right, I'm going to go order parts, rip the rest of that thing down. The next episode, we'll be putting it back together. And I hope to see you next time. See ya.